There we go. There's my wife waving goodbye in the window. What's up guys? I'm back today making another video for you guys. As promised, I'm going to start discussing the reasons that I see in scripture of why the law that Moses gave at Sinai is still for believers today and that it hasn't changed. And that even though there are some of it that we can't keep today because there's no temple, um, that the other things are things we're supposed to be obedient to. And again, I am not saying that we follow this law and these commandments for salvation. I need you to understand that. But rather, we obey them because we are saved. Alright? So, I'm going to take in a little ride to a spot that I really like. And when we get there, we're going to talk more about it. And I'm going to give you a few scriptures to think about. All right? Let's go. I guess I didn't need that much. Guys, what's up? Here we are. Check out this place, man. What a cool spot. 
a really cool spot. Just gonna find a place to park and get off this bike. Look at this. So yeah, this is a spot that I like to take a ride to. It's a really cool spot. And uh, just great scenery, great spot to just sit and meditate a little, think about some things, go over some scripture. And as promised, I brought you guys here because I want to continue to talk about the reasons why I believe that the law of Moses is still for us today and important to us today. So, I think we'll just take a little walk. Alright, we got some people fishing. Really cool spot, really cool spot. So, uh, this is in no particular order, um, just because this is the first reason or first video doesn't mean that it's the most important reason why I believe the law is for today, but I believe that um, all the reasons that I'm going to give in further videos are just all put together, just overwhelming amount of evidence that God intended the law that he gave at Sinai to be for today and forever for those who are believers. And some people will say, well, you know, the law is not for the church. The law is for, was for Israel. But I think Paul made it clear when he explained that, look, we're grafted in when we believe. We become citizens of Israel. So, When, uh, when we get saved and we uh, become believers in Christ, part of the body, we become citizens with Israelites just as if we were native born, sons of Abraham. And the law was given to Israel, right? And as I had mentioned before in an earlier video, that... Um, I'm sorry, mentioned before in an earlier video that um, when the in the Old Testament in Jeremiah when God speaks about the new covenant that he's going to make number one, it doesn't say he's going to make it with Gentiles it says he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and that's interesting, right? because we have to be part of Israel to be part of this new covenant it doesn't say that God's going to make it with the Gentiles. Now, the Gentiles are welcome, and the whole world is welcome, and can be grafted in. But once we're grafted in, we become part of Israel. So, I'm going to go over this first scripture. is, And this is right from the mouth of Jesus. All right, And that's why it may not be one of the most important, but it's definitely an important scripture. So, bear with me here. Now, this comes out of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 through 19, all right? And Jesus said, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever, therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And that's from New King James Version. So a couple things there. First of all, Jesus comes, he states clearly, if we have the question, did he come to do away with the law? He says it plain and simple. No, I did not come to destroy the law. And this is super important because in the Old Testament, God spoke through Moses and he said, look, 
if any prophet, any man claiming to be a prophet of God comes and teaches any different than what Moses taught, he's a false prophet. If he adds anything to the Torah or takes anything away from the Torah, he's a false prophet. So Jesus is making it clear right from the get-go that he is, that is not his plan. He has not come to do away with this. And people may have been confused because there's plenty of times in your scripture where you see it seems that Jesus is going head-to-head, toe-to-toe with the Pharisees and the Sadducees over questions about the law. For instance, when they accuse him of breaking the law because he ate bread with unwashed hands. And Jesus makes it clear that this is not found in Torah. There is no commandment in the Torah that says you must wash your hands before eating bread. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's a great idea to wash your hands before you eat. But what Jesus was pointing out was, this is not a commandment from God. It's a commandment of men. And he makes it plain when he tells them, you continue to put the commandments of men above the commandments of God. So, right from Jesus' mouth, he says, the law is not going to pass away. And not only is it not going to pass away, but it's going to be around until heaven and earth pass away. So, I don't know about you, but as far as I can tell my reading in scripture, Peter even says, we're still waiting for the new heaven and the new earth. So we're still on the first heaven, it's still, it's still in the first earth, and this is the first heaven. So it hasn't passed away, and so the law hasn't passed away. And so that means we're to be obedient to it. And again, I've said before, and we'll get into more details, yes, there's laws within the Torah that we can't follow because of this certain reasons. For instance, most of us are not living in the land, and a lot of the laws pertain to the land. A lot of the laws pertain to to the temple, and we don't have a temple today. So... A lot of laws pertain to the Levites and the priests, and we don't have Levites and priests. So there's a lot of things that we can't follow. But we do our very best to walk as he walked, because that's what Scripture tells us to do, right? That Jesus was our example, and we are to walk as he walked. Now, many people will teach these days that Jesus came not only to do away with the law, which is crazy, because when you see the warning, right, it says, if anyone teaches men to not do one of the least of these commandments, he'll be least in the kingdom. So it's not a salvation issue. If you're teaching against these things, it seems as though you can still end up in the kingdom, right? Because we're not saved by our obedience to the law. However, it doesn't seem like it's a good thing to do. Why would you want to be least in the kingdom? So that's if you teach just against the least of the commandments. But what about those teachers out there that are saying, all the law is gone. You don't have to follow anything. You can continue to do as you want to do, and you don't need to follow any of the commandments found in the Bible. Man, that's scary to think. So, I think there's another place we need to look at quick. Another place where Jesus makes it clear about his intentions with the law. In John chapter 7, verse 16, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine but his who sent me. Okay, so Jesus is coming and saying, look, I'm not bringing you something new. I'm returning with what was already given. And I'm explaining it to you, and I'm showing you what its true intentions were from the beginning, and I'm doing away with a lot of these false doctrines and uh, laws that were added by men, and I'm bringing you the truth. But it's not something new. It's the doctrine that was given to me by the Father, because the Father's who sent him, right? Well, what does the Father say his doctrine is? If you turn to Proverbs 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 1 through 2, it says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. Do not forsake my law. In many versions, especially like the King James or whatever, that word there, from the Greek, it's Torah. Do not forsake my Torah. And the Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament, where God lays out all the commands that he wants his people to follow. So, uh, Paul makes it clear, right? In 2 Timothy, 
I believe it's chapter 3 and 16, he says, look, all Scripture can be used for doctrine and for training in righteousness. So if we look at Proverbs and we can say, well, this is a good verse, this we can use because it's from the Scriptures for doctrine and for training in righteousness, it says, forsake ye not my Torah. That's good doctrine. So if anyone is teaching that the Torah is done away with, just by that right there, it says, it's bad doctrine. You can't have good doctrine that says, do away with God's law. And Jesus himself, right from his own words, we just read it, makes it clear. The law is not to be done away with. Not one jot or tittle will pass till heaven and earth pass away. Well, guys, heaven and earth is still here, and the law is still here. And again, I want to make it clear. My intentions are not to teach people uh, that obedience to the law can lead to salvation, because that's not at all what the Bible says. However, because we are saved, because Jesus made a way for us to come back to the Father, and you have to remember that part of the reason they needed a way back to the Father was because the Father in the Old Testament divorced his people. He gave them a letter of divorce. And according to Torah, when a husband and a wife are divorced, they cannot come back together. So that's why a lot of times you hear Paul speaking about a mystery and the prophets were wondering, how is God going to accomplish this? It's because, how is God going to bring his people back to himself without breaking his own law? But guys, that's the first reason that I wanted to discuss with you guys. Jesus, Jesus made it clear, I think. If you even have the question in your mind, is the law done away with? Just read those words of Jesus. I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And he makes it clear that people that follow him, his followers, Christians, his disciples, myself, that they are to teach even the least of the commandments. And he didn't just say the law, because I know some people are going to argue that he meant by the law, he meant the Ten Commandments. But he makes it clear, the law and the prophets. And again, that word there is Torah. So he says, I've not come to destroy the Torah and the prophets. The Torah being the first five books of the Bible and the prophets, all those Old Testament books that came after. Well, if he's saying he didn't come to destroy any of that, then all those commands are still in effect. And you have to admit that the whole reason Jesus was able to go to the cross for us, sinless, was because he followed those laws. Did he not? Was there any place you can find where Jesus broke the law or broke Torah? There's none. That's why he was sinless. He came to show us that he could do it. See, the Father said in the Old Testament, I give you these instructions. They're not too hard for you. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to fulfill them and do it to perfection like Jesus did. But nothing in there, no command on its own is so hard that it's incapable of us to do. We can all do it. It's the instructions of a father, a loving father, who wants his children to live a good and fulfilling and fruitful life that will make him proud and bring glory to his name. So, remember, keep studying, keep reading. Don't listen to every teacher and preacher out there. You, you have to get into the Word yourself. I mean, most of all, to argue against the law, people use the writings of Paul. And we'll go over it in another video. But obviously, even Peter warned that many will take the words of Paul and twist them to their own destruction, teaching lawlessness. Well, isn't that exactly what they do with the words of Paul? They say, look what Paul said here. Look what Paul said there. But even if there seemed to be some contradiction, and I do not believe there is, I believe it's just a misunderstanding. If there was a contradiction between what Jesus said and what Paul said, who do you follow? The Word says we're to walk just as he walked. Well, he walked according to Torah. He kept the Sabbath. He didn't eat pork. He didn't break any of the commands. So why would we think it would be okay for us to do it. I gotta tell you, I don't think it is. And the more I study this out, the more I see that we're in a lot of error in the church today. And there's 
an Old Testament verse, and if I can remember it, I'll put it up on the screen. But it talks about a day coming where God's people are going to begin to wake up and come back to Torah, come back to His law, to His instructions. I believe that's starting to happen now. I'm seeing it pop up all over. And guys, stick with me. Let's learn more about this. Let's dig into the Word together more, and let's talk about it. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I'm going to do my best to answer everything I can. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. If you thought this video was good, if you thought it helped you understand something, if you found it interesting, if you think it can help someone else, please, please share it. Please subscribe and like the video. It helps me out. And as long as people are watching, I'm going to continue to do this. But if people aren't watching, then I will uh, abandon the channel. But... Uh, I have good feelings about it, and I really think uh, it's going to be a good thing. So stick with me, guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. And remember, keep reading the Word, right? That's our spiritual food. The body grows by eating the bread, but the bread of life, the spiritual food, is the Word of God. You can't grow without it. God bless you.